Hi guys, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning. And today I wanted to do a video on some math activities for kindergarten, um, maybe even some of your high-flying uh, pre-K kids and some of your first graders. So today's video, I'm going to kind of center it around um, using this 100 chart. This is a movable 100 chart that um, we got from Learning Resources. You can take the pieces out, as you see. Um, I have all of my pieces on the side that does not have a number underneath. Um, and I'll show you the reason why. On the back here, and I'm not going to flip it over because all of the pieces will fall out. But on the back, when you flip up the pieces, the, it tells the number underneath. Okay, so um, one of the things I wanted to show you is when we use this 100 chart, um, we do counting. So we'll set it down and we'll just count and we'll count from 1 to 100 and so it's great memory practice. But we also will um, flip over some of the numbers like so and we'll um, talk about missing numbers. So um, what comes after one, two, what comes after three, four. And of course we'll use the bigger numbers as the kids get a little bit more proficient. Now another thing we can do, is you notice I flipped over the um, numbers when you're counting by twos. So what you can do when you're first teaching kids to count by twos is flip over the ones that are not twos. And if you do that, then they can see the number and they see they're skipping one each time as they're counting. So you can put them over like that. Okay, there we go. And then you can um, practice. So you can go two, four, six, eight, ten. And of course, the next one will be 12. So you wanna flip them. So anyways, you can even have the kids flip them over so they don't see them. And then, so once the children are proficient at counting by twos, then you would cover up the numbers and they would say them. So they would say two, four, six, eight, ten, and so on. Um, and so, well actually, and this one should be this way. I didn't flip that one back over. So you can see how you would just basically cover up all of the numbers when you're counting by twos. And you can do the same thing when you're counting by fives or when you're teaching them, them to count by tens. Give them a visual representation so, so that they actually see that they're skipping. Like when you're counting by twos, they see that they're skipping um, every other number. But then if you do it like when you're counting by fives, so here um, I would cover up five, 10, 15, 20. They can visually see as they're counting by fives that they're skipping um, every, you know, they're, they're counting by fives. They're skipping those four in between and they're saying the fifth number. So um, they would count five, 10, 15, 20, and so on. Okay, another idea on how to use a 100 chart and just kind of an overall idea on addition and subtraction. These are my touch point math cards and I pulled out, um, these ones have little eggs on them for April. These are my April cards. And then um, I also pulled out my May set. My May set has flowers because of springtime. So we're just gonna use the flower set I think today. Um, since Easter is finished, even though we're still in April, it is springtime. So we're going to use the flowers. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to give the kids two cards. They're practicing addition, right? So three plus four. And then they can use manipulatives to figure out their answer. Here I have some um, uh, Lego Duplo box. So they would have three plus four. Put these together. And that would help them. So I have four plus three. I always tell the kids to start with the bigger number. So four, five, six, seven. Or you don't even have to use the blocks since I have my um, touch points here. They would count. So I already know I have four. That's the bigger number. So I'm going to count three more. Five, six, seven. They're touching with their fingers. So four, five, six, seven. Um, or one other way is you can use um, little manipulatives. And as they count, they can put them right there on the card. So I know I have four. I'm going to count three more. Five, six, seven. And these um, manipulatives I'm using are pom-poms attached to magnets. Okay, so now I know my answer is seven. So the last step would be then to use my numbers. So I'm going to find the number seven. 
and put my number, my answer down so I can show my teacher that I knew what the answer was. So um, we like to use this, the numbers on here to actually um, physically show our answers when we're working hands-on with math problems. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is a lot of times we will use our movable 100 chart here to help us um, with our activities. So this activity I'm gonna show you is from my early learners math curriculum. It is called Spin and Compare, and um, kids are comparing numbers in this activity. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna show you is when I teach kids, when I first start teaching children um, how to compare numbers, I use these um, comparing number sticks that I made and um, these are a separate download on my website I'll leave a link below to these um, you can print them out and just attach them to these um, sticks here and then uh, what I do is I give the kids I'll show you first <laughs> let me move this okay so I'll give the kids um, two numbers I'll start with easy numbers so like let's say six and five, and we'll talk about when we're counting, what comes first and so on, and then I'll put them on the table like this, and then they use their sticks to compare. So they are going to use this stick, and they'll put it in between to show me that five is less than six. Okay, now um, visually you can sh use manipulatives to show it, so the kids can take their manipulatives and then count out five, one, two, three, four, five, and then they'll count out six, and they'll, they can visually see that six is more than five, okay? It's one more. Um, and so then we talk about how the alligator wants to eat the bigger number, okay? They always eat the bigger number. So if I have five here and I have six here, which one is, I keep moving them, which one is bigger? Well, they can visually see that there's one more over here, so six is bigger. So they're gonna look at their six and they're gonna decide, well, which one is eating the is going to be eating the six. If I put this one down here, he's gonna be eating the five, so that's wrong. So we always want the one that's gonna eat the bigger number. Okay, and so then we also talk about numbers that are equal to um, as well. And then they use this stick obviously for equal to. Um, so yeah, we so we do that with the sticks first. Okay, that's the first initial way I introduce it. All right, then after I have introduced it. Then we use um, our activity centers. Um, these are from my early learners math curriculum. And uh, so this activity center, they have to spin. This says number one, number two. So first they're gonna spin number one, and then they're gonna spin number two. And it's gonna give them two numbers. So here I'm gonna spin number one, and I'm gonna spin number two and see which numbers I get. Okay, so I got 16 and 10. And then what the kids have to do is normally they would write 16 and 10 in one of these equations to make it true. So instead of writing, we're gonna use our numbers um, on our chart. And so I'm gonna pull out 16 and I'm gonna pull out 10 because those are what I spun. And then I'm gonna look at my chart and if 16 is my first number and 10 is my second number, which one shows, uh, which one would be true? Well, 16 would go here and 10 would go here. That would make this uh, a true statement, 16 is greater than 10. Okay, then they can go again, they'll spin again. So now I have 52, and what did I get, one? <laughs> okay, 52 and one, that's easy. So they're gonna get 50, one, we're gonna get 52. 52 was first and one was second, so it would actually go in this one as well. Okay, so as you see, we can use our number, if you don't have Numbers, of course, you can use dry erase markers, but this is just another fun way to use your numbers uh, in an activity. Okay, here's another activity where we're gonna use our numbers from our movable 100 chart. So these um, cards come from my subtraction unit of my early learners math curriculum. And what the kids do is they take the card and they're supposed to use it with a dry erase marker, um, but we're gonna use it with our movable pieces and they look at the picture and they have to write the number okay, sentence. Okay, so if I was going to do this card, um, the kids would write the number sentence. So they would write 10 minus seven equals three. Okay, so there's, cause there's 10 all together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they subtracted three. So they would use a dry erase marker. Now instead of that, I'm gonna use my pieces. So I'm going to, so I would have the kids do 10 minus seven 
equals three and look at how they fit perfectly on there. I didn't actually make it so that they would fit, but look at that, <laughs> they fit perfectly. And so then of course they would just do the next one. Whoop. So this one is one, two, three, four, five, minus four equals one. So just another way to use your pieces instead of using a dry erase marker on, you know, another activity. Okay, here's another activity from my early learners math curriculum, and this is the unit um, on T numbers, where kids are learning to count T numbers and practice um, numbers. So what sense. the children have to do then is they're going to count the number that's on their card. They have to build it with blocks. You see the little boy here has blocks. Um, any kind of blocks you have, and then they have to write the numbers. So um, I'm going to use these blocks, and we're going to build with um, Lego Duplo blocks. So here I have 10 um, pencils in this jar, and three more makes the number 13. So I am going to go ahead and build the number 13. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so I have now used my Duplo blocks to build the number 13. Okay, and the kids can even stand it up if they want. Um, so I built the number 13, and now I have to write the number 13 on here. I would normally use a dry erase marker, but since I have my number chart here, I can just find the number 13. You know, this adds another aspect to it as well because the kids have to actually look and kind of notice where 13 is on a number chart or in sequence with other numbers. So it, it just kind of adds a, um, one more uh, level of depth to it. So anyways, they're gonna find 13 and they're gonna, they're gonna place it on their, um, card and then they'd be done with that card and they could grab another card and go on now uh, another thing you can mention to the children is that when they find their number have them take a look and say okay well what comes before 13 12 what comes after 13 14 so they can kind of just see it in sequence and um, go from there they can also see what 10 less and 10 more would be so you could say what would be 10 less than 13 3 because it's up here and then what would be 10 more than 13 23 um, and so it just kind of gives them a visual representation of where the number lies within the um, within other numbers. So, anyways, so that's why we like to use the chart besides just um, writing numbers with our dry erase. Okay. Okay. So here's another activity that we're going to use our number pieces for. And this activity is called Bubble Trouble, and it is also from the teen uh, number unit of my early learner's math curriculum. And as you can see, it's missing, these kids are blowing bubbles, and the bubbles have teen numbers on them, and they're missing numbers. So we're going to use our pieces to fill in the missing numbers instead of using a dry erase marker to write our numbers. So here I have um, on this card here. Sorry. 12, 13, 14. My missing number is 15. So I would just take my piece, place it on there, and I'm done, and I could go on to the next one. So this one is missing 19. And then once the kids have filled these out, then you'll have, uh, you can take those missing number pieces and have them put them in order. So let's say they finished all of their cards and all, all those teen numbers from 11 to 19 were use because all of these cards are missing one of these numbers okay so then they'd have all their pieces out on their cards and when they're done with that then you can have you can put the pieces in front of them and say okay now we're going to put them all in order so they're just going to work on putting their numbers in order and then they can go ahead and count from 11 to 19. So it's just adding another layer of fun to an already exciting activity. <laughs> so now they can count 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, that's after they have filled in all of their pieces. Okay, these are clip cards from um, my Numbers to 100 unit of my Early Learners Math Curriculum. This unit focuses on um, place value and counting numbers all the way to 100. So uh, really what the kids are supposed to do is they're supposed to use clips, um, like clothesbin clips, to clip the right number um, on each of these cards, okay? But instead of doing that, we're going to use our pieces again. So what they're going to do is each of these jars has 10, and then when they get to the last one, it has a different number. Um, 
So they're going to count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then how many are in this jar? One, two, three, four, five. So this is the number 65. It's a representation of like, your tens and ones when you think about place value. That's what these cards are. So, okay, so this is the number 65. So my answer here is 65. So what they're going to do is they're going to look on their number chart. They're going to find the number 65. And again, it just gives them a visual representation of where 65 would be within um, all of the other, I can't get it off, all of the other numbers around it. So they can see that 65 is more than halfway, um, but not too much more because 50 would be halfway. So they can kind of just visually see that. But anyway, so they're gonna find 65 and they're just gonna place it right there on the card and then they're finished. They can go on to the next one. All right, so let's count this one. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 92. So there are 92 jelly beans on this card and they're gonna go ahead and on their chart, go ahead and find 92, which is right here again and place it on their card. So just another way to use your clip cards for um, counting numbers. All right, friends, we are almost done. I just wanted to pull out a really old activity that I made a while ago. And this activity you can find in my um, preschool, ultimate preschool bundle. And you can also find them um, separately as well. These are county maps from my counting fun activity set. Like I said, that set is part of my ultimate preschool bundle. Um, and it's also sold separately. Okay, so in this activity is, there's just these counting mats, um, you know, that look like this, and the kids have to use their number pieces to cover them up. And you can use any number pieces you have, but I'm, of course, going to use these ones today because that's what I'm showing you is my 100 chart. But you could use, um, like, magnetic numbers for this. You can use, what else have we used? We, we have um, number pieces from puzzles, things like that. But, okay, so I'm going to use these. And really all it is is it's a preschool uh, counting activity. So they're going to count the um, how many are in each... Um, the ball machine and place the number. So here, this one has three. One, two, three, four, five, six. You get the idea. So they're just gonna count and cover. And when they fill up their entire mat, that's when they're finished and they can go on to another one. So there's counting, covering, and for a preschooler, this is a really good idea to use the 100 chart because again, they can it's see cool. the numbers okay. in order. So now, once they've covered up their entire mat, it will have, it will use all of the numbers from one to 10. Now, another thing you can have them do then is they have to place them back on here in order after they've filled up their mat. So this is just great practice of putting our numbers back where they go in order, okay? So I would definitely have the kids do this part. So don't you clean up after them, make them do it <laughs> because they're using their brains to figure out where they go. Okay, all right, that was the last activity I wanted to show you guys. I hope this video was helpful for you. I wanted to do a math uh, video since I've been doing so many uh, phonics and reading videos lately because um, I'm working on my phonics curriculum and I've heard so much from you guys about that, uh, about my curriculum and how much fun you guys are having and I so appreciate it. And I appreciate those of you who follow me over at Facebook. Some of you have sent me pictures of your kids and your students um, working on, um, the activities and that is just really cool. I like that a lot. Um, so anyways, I wanted to do a video on math to kind of get you guys thinking in a different direction today. So I hope it was enjoyable and we'll see you next time. Bye.